Hello, this is Manash Patel at IMTF Trade. Today is August 14th for a market update. It's been a while since we posted an update. Reason why is we posted one at towards the end of July uh, talking about how August is an ugly month and most likely markets will pull back. And that's exactly what's happened uh, for the market. So your bullish positions, uh, hopefully you guys liquidated or tighten up your stops. And for your bear, you enter some bearish positions to start looking to hedge your portfolio or to start looking for uh, to make some extra money that way. Uh, remember, you make more money on the markets going down as long as you know how to play it correctly uh, because you could take advantage of the volatility. Anyways, uh, let's go look at the markets first. So we're going to look at the E-mini S&P 500 futures. I focused on the daily time frame right now. Uh, reason why the markets are swinging up and down, up and down, and a lot of people are kind of getting whipsawed in and out of positions. Uh, and you kind of need to be very, very careful on how you trade at this point. Remember, when the markets are consolidating, you want to make sure that basically your system is proven and tested. And what should be happening is your system becomes extremely picky in picking up opportunities out there and not going in and out, in and out, in and out. If you are going in and out, in and out, then you're not really trading probabilities at all. Um, you should be looking for high quality trades at this point. On here, on a daily here, uh, you could see here we have a resistance marked up. There's a multiple time frame cross right there. And you could see our price kind of respect to that level there. If you move it a little, actually it's supposed to be a little down right there. It's price is kind of almost hit that level right there, but you could kind of see how it's respecting it there. And then over here, this is where the level is stopped at. And where I got that from is if you look back here and just kind of scroll back here, there's a multiple time frame cross right there. And you could see how it kind of came, there was a resistance here, came to support, started its trend here. You could kind of see the bleeps above here, but that's pretty much where the resistance is, support is. And if you look at where the low we went to, the low we went to this multiple time frame cross, which is roughly about right there. Okay, so that's kind of where we kind of stop there, uh, which is where this little bleep going down is going to. So this is kind of where the consolidation pattern, we're kind of consolidating between right now is between here to 2790 and the 2945 is where we're kind of pretty much going. Uh, let's go down to a four hour chart to kind of look at exactly what's going on here. Um, well, the markets yesterday went up, went up here, but you could see it really didn't follow through here. You have two bullish setups that occurred. First one got canceled, second one got canceled. So this is telling you that this market is not ready to go bullish yet. Uh, it probably needs to consolidate a little uh, to sit there before it goes up. If it comes down to this support again, that's not gonna be good at all. Right now, what you need it to do is kind of consolidate back and forth between these levels, or that resistance level right there, and probably the halfway mark, which is probably roughly, my guess would be right, roughly right there. Okay, so you kind of want it to kind of consolidate between the 29.45 and the 28.58, and then eventually sit there and break this resistance level to start going up. Um, so my guess is, is that you're probably gonna have uh, a crazy market until uh, after August 20th when options expire. After that, then you probably have a potential for the markets to go up going into Labor Day. And that's typically what the seasonal pattern is, is that markets sell off in August, you know, what you call profit taking. And then sometime in after Labor Day, uh, the markets typically take off. So uh, be very careful how you're trading and be very, very cautious and be take very high quality opportunities. Uh, let's go to the VIX. If you remember, we'd be looking at the VIX, VIX on the weekly time frame here. Um, we have three zones in here. Um, and here are, is everything in here. Uh, you can see this is the middle zone right there. You can see there's a resistance level that's developed right there. And you can kind of see where it's kind of just kind of bouncing around there. So the critical support for the VIX is here. This 8, 1780, 
has to break on the weekly time frame in order for this market to sit there and start to go bullish until that happens you're not going to get that at all and this market's pretty much living in this bearish zone here this bullish zone for the vix but that's bearish for the markets so you really need to sit there and start breaking this 1780 when you do close below that level on the weekly time frame now you got an opportunity for the markets to start trending bullish uh going uh back to about the 11.5 level here so that's kind of what we're looking at there okay now quickly now i have mentioned you that you should be extremely picky in what you're choosing out there okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to our scanner and i'm going to look for high probability items okay so first i'm going to basically choose the u.s markets in here i choose s p 500 oops And then I'm going to choose the NASDAQ 100 and focusing on those. Now, we're looking for high probability bullish items. And what does that mean? You're looking for scenarios where the monthly is still intact as far as the trend is concerned. So this pullback of profit taking that's occurring in the market is basically just profit taking as far as a long term basis concerned. So what I'm looking for is a bullish number five or number six uh, on the higher time frames here. Uh, which is a monthly here and if you look here this is your list of US stocks right now that are still bullish as far as the monthly time frame is concerned these are the ones that are truly truly bullish that started a trend in there uh, these are bullish and based on a trend continuation so you may get limited profits with these if you start looking to enter them uh, but there's a lot more of these opportunities here okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I need, may need to filter this down. So what I'm going to do is make sure that they're also intact on the weekly since there's a huge list there. Uh, and I'm going to focus on, on number bullish there. So this is the shorter list of that big one there of trend continuations where the weekly also is in a bullish trend too. So these are the opportunities I'm looking for right now where the markets are basically profit taking these are the opportunities that i'm looking to enter uh, moving forward okay so i'm looking for possible trade setups on these on my lower time frames because i know that the weekly and monthly are still intact on those let's now look at crude oil and then we'll look at gold real fast so crude oil here, you can see it's been respecting the top of this cloud. The latest resistance is here, where every time it hits the top of this cloud here and trying to change the sentiment to on the weekly time frame, the bullish, it stops. And you can see here is basically where that level is. And then you could see the support, which is this multiple time frame cross right there. So crude oil is basically consolidating between those two levels there. And until it sits in close above this cloud here, the sentiment's always going to be bearish where it's going to try to break the support here, uh, which is not a good sign at all. So your crude oil is still bearish, but it's bearish consolidating between these two levels at this point. Now let's look at gold. Gold's kind of got to that resistance level, which is right there at 1536. This has made a drastic move from the, this support here and has broken that and drastically gone up very, very fast. In fact, that's too fast. So it really needs a pullback right now. Uh, so we're kind of looking for signs where basically this is now kind of uh, stopping here at this level here. Start to pull back, a healthy pullback, and then start to move up. So we're waiting for that process to occur. Right now, it's reached this resistance level, which is what we're expecting it to get to, which is at 13, 15, 36, 50. And you could see how well that's basically is resistance because it was a major support here. And when it broke that support here, it started this downward trend here. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at there. Uh, and you could see even in this downward trend from here to here, when it broke that support here, it came and says held that support here and that's been the baseline for this here so this is the overall range long term uh, for gold is basically between 1182 and 1536 now this is very critical uh, to see exactly what happens at this level here if it breaks it here on the two every for two months then we got a possibility of sitting there going back to 19,000 or roughly around there. But we got a lot of resistance levels there. So we're at a very, very critical point right now 
uh, and unfortunately got there so fast that it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens there. But notice what happens here when this sat there and dropped drastically fast, came to that support here, consolidated for months, and that can possibly happen here we go where we could consolidate here for months and then eventually come back down. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with time. Only time will tell exactly what's going to happen. If you guys have any questions, email us at info at eiicapital.com. Thank you.